Hello and welcome to this video on the Dual ADSR from Soundforce, a heavily expanded, does everything you could want from an envelope, Dual ADSR. Let's check out what's to come before we get into it. Right away, I'd like to say thank you to Soundforce for sponsoring this video and funding the creation of this demo, allowing me to demo the actual module for you, but also get into some synthesis, patch tips and tricks that you can apply to your system too. So the dual ADSR, as you would have guessed, is a dual ADSR. We have nice ADSR controls, attack, decay, sustain, release. We have a short, medium and long time. We can cycle. Linear and exponential shaping with a nice, unique Roland Juno shape in that medium time and exponential position. We get the envelope, we have a re-trigger, our main output, an inverted output, and an end of output where we can select end of attack, decay, or release on a switch. We can manually gate the envelope and see its activity on that red LED. And we also get CV for the ADSR stages with attenuators. The actual spread of the values, the time values that we change, is exponentially curved. And this is modelled on the envelopes of a Roland Juno 106. And it means that tuning in faster times lower down is really easy. And that time expands out and kind of blooms into those longer settings higher up on the fader. So cycle mode will cycle through the attack and decay stages. The sustain will offset those. And it normals the gate high to cycle, but plugging in a cable, we can actually gate this activity on and off, where it will cycle while the gate is high, and then release from that point when the gate is low. You don't need to do that, and you get normal cycles when you just flick the switch. But actually kind of gating your looping cycling envelopes on and off is really cool. There's tons of patches in this video, lots of kind of tips and tricks for getting more dynamics, more modulation, more interest into your patches, pushing and pulling this thing around. There's a timing index on screen if you want to skip around. So without further ado, let's dive in. So the dual ADSR is born out of the Juno 106, setting the shape to exponential and our time to medium time, short, medium and long is a true representation of the envelope times and curves modelled on the Juno 106. Even in exponential mode, modelling that Juno 106 gives us a linear attack and then exponential decays and releases. So you can see there on data, it models the shape really well. So in the Juno 106 is on a just wanted to make a similar kind of chordal patch. So here we'll look at a simple way to add dynamics to your otherwise basic envelopes. I have a very basic patch going on. It's a pulse wave with a little bit of PWM from a separate LFO into a low pass filter and the envelope, the green trace here on data, the bottom one on the dual ADSR, it's just opening and closing the cutoff. There's no VCA and nothing else involved in this patch. I've also got this blue trace on data, a stepped sequence, which I'm thinking of as velocity. This could be velocity from a MIDI keyboard that's coming through MIDI to CV, an expression output on something, stepped random or a stepped sequence, be it from a full on all singing or dancing digital sequencer or a simple analog step sequencer. So let's try this velocity sequence into a sustain. Thank you. 
We can hear that this cutoff is just pulling up from its low setting on this filter, then some lower frequencies bleed through, and again, nice, dynamic and expressive. So here's a patch with some nicely modulated, expressive envelopes being pulled all over, and the patch is kind of pulling itself all over too. There's a little bass drum in the background, super simple and quite quiet and muted, but just kind of setting the pace of the patch. Now I have a gate pattern coming into the top envelope. I've also got a re-trigger pattern coming in on quarter notes in this patch. And my output here is modulating this dual filter. Sound source is the DCO, nice mix of different oscillator waves and some noise. And I'm modulating a lot of what's going on. Bottom envelope here is an LFO. Let's kind of cancel out that behavior for now. I'll come to that shortly. Super basic envelope there. I have a accent pattern coming into sustain, which effectively on certain steps pushes a gate signal up, effectively filling out this envelope at full level. Have a stepped sequence into decay, which on each step is changing decay time, giving me different decay curves exponential envelope and the cycling bottom envelope that ad cycling there as you can see on the led is just nudging my attack and you can hear and see these softer kind of log curves coming in that's this attack being pushed up when the signal is low on there when this lfo is low i've just got that nice tight snappy fast attack now the output of this filter goes into another filter been split there and we've got some high passing based on this LFO signal. Have the inverted version coming out and modulating pulse width on the oscillator. So one expressive heavily modulated envelope to low pass filter, LFO modulating the top one, modulating PWM and modulating the high pass. And I'll just let this play for a second so you can hear what's going on. So here's a patch looking at using the inverted output to pan sound around. I'm steadily gating this dual ADSR and I have four unsynced free running LFOs to attack decay sustain release, moving these times around their panel setting. Now the normal output is the blue trace on data and that red LED there. And as this comes up, watching either the LED or the data there, the sound is being panned left. I have a VCA panned hard left, which is off, and this positive voltage, the normal envelope, opens up the sound on the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, I've done the opposite. I have a VCA that is open, it's biased or offset, or manual gain control is up full, and the inverted out, the pink trace on data there, is pulling the level down. So as the left hand side opens, the right hand side closes and this pans around depending on the panel settings and of course the modulation. It's quite a complex patch but as you listen to this move around, certainly in headphones, you can hear how this kind of panning, auto pan kind of sound modulates and develops and you can see that on data there. I'll stop talking and let you listen and just watch this panning shift around in the stereo space. So getting LFOs or cycling envelopes out of the dual ADSR is as simple as flicking on cycle. Now have no gate present and we're coming out of the main out here, the AD simply cycles. However, if we add a gate signal, it cycles for the duration of the gate and then releases down to zero volts. The sustain with both gated and non-gated behavior will actually raise that lower voltage. So it's not cycling all the way down to the bottom and the same when it's just cycling freely.
we can of course go exponential. Again, offset it. Cycle through slow, medium and long times. And let's get this again. So it's nice to create these little gated bursts and also if we make the bottom one cycle or use any voltage we can start to modulate these times as well. So it's really easy to get more complex and interesting cycling envelope or LFO behaviours with gates and all that CV and really not many signals to actually get something interesting and different going on. So here I'm using the cycling envelope as an accent. The top one opens up my VCA and the bottom envelope opens up my filter cutoff. That's quite a lot of effects, big detuned, kind of trancey sound. If I open my filter fully, you'll hear this opening the VCA and that's the top trace there on data. I'm modulating the sustain of this envelope to get some dynamics into the wave shaping to the level control. Now using the cycle mode with a gate to get some nice kind of wobbly accents. So here's just another patch trying to be expressive, dynamic, interesting. I just do all sorts from the dual ADSR. Now I have a sound, this one, which is the pinged dual filter. We look at pinging filters and the dual filter in its demo linked below. I'm using the top envelope to modulate its pitch and the end of output, which is set to end of decay. So it's pretty instant from the ADSR2. Now losing that sound, Let's bring in the main sound from the top ADSR. Now the yellow envelope there on data is the top output, the main out. I'm gating it with 16th notes, firing in faster ratcheting bursts into the re-trigger. I'm modulating gain, wave shape, pitch, more distortion and filtering before actually coming into this main filter again with that same envelope. So it's a dynamic driven sound. Bringing the other sound back in. running LFOs, modulating the times, modulating sustain there so that the release actually comes from a different level of sustain each time. And it's an interesting sound. So here's an odd quirky patch, but one that's interesting because the sustain on the ADSR when it's looping is serving like a modulation depth. Now this is a high pitch saw wave into a filter with the ADSR oscillating at audio rates, cycling at audio rates, and I'm audio rate modulating attack and decay. So it's a big hot audio rate mess, giving me this crackly weird noise source. There's some reverb, but I was just interested Now, because that sustain will offset this looping cycling envelope, we're changing the range of this audio rate modulation to just being a sustained voltage. We could do this over voltage control, fade this audio rate mess in and out. But that slider works as a nice performance controller. It was just a quirky little patch that I wanted to share. 
So here I'm using two sounds to demonstrate the end of outputs. The top envelope is gated by an external source and that's controlling the sound. It sounds like a kick. Now the end of output is set to end of release so we can see as this release stage changes on day to day this blue envelope fires. Bringing that sound back in. Now as I change release time pushes the triggering of the second envelope and therefore the hi-hat even further. Now the end of outputs have a switch. As I said, this is set to end of release. We could do end of attack. And because I have an instant attack, it fires off the bottom ADSR and the end of output there is almost like a mult of the gate. No attack time, super fast, just triggers the bottom envelope. Of course, if I change attack time, you can see in here, these start to offset from each other. We could do end of decay. And because decay is set high enough, I'm not actually getting through that decay's time, its stage, its setting before this re-triggers. So I don't get a trigger, but with a shorter decay, you can see that I do. So again, it becomes a balancing act if you're wanting to end off trigger one envelope from the other in terms of your tempo, your gate signals, and of course the envelope times settings too. So just to run this down, top envelope controls the level of the left hand audio. This end of release gates the bottom envelope that controls the right hand audio. End of the bottom envelope opens up my filter, letting in more top end and noise, and fires some sound into this granular pitch shift and reverb. So here I'm using the end of outputs on the dual ADSR as gate delays have a kick, snare, clap and hi-hat going on. My clap first comes in to gate the top envelope and then I'm taking the end of output to actually delay this gate and get a flam between the snare and the clap, a delayed response while they largely play the same rhythm. My hi-hat comes into the bottom envelope and again, I'm using the end of, end of release in this case for both of them to trigger my hi-hat so I can get this delayed, swung loose, kind of boom bap hip hop feel. Taking the releases right down, you can hear everything lines up. We'll start by delaying that clap, I'll go quite far. And you can see the difference between all these triggers on data there, it's kind of hard to get some triggers to see, but if you're following it, you'll get the gist. So this is too far, it's just loose and out of time. Nor do I want it exactly in time. Just a little bit there feels good. It's just got this looseness to it that works for the groove. You can hear the transient of that snare hit before the clap. Let's delay the hats. And again, you can go way too far, take it out of time. Doesn't feel good at all. Straight hat against that flam works well, but let's just delay it a little bit. And that hi-hat being that little bit behind, that little bit delayed by the end of release, just gives it this groove and feel. So that's it for this video. Go check out other Soundforce demos linked in the description. You can support my work at patreon.com forward slash divkid. Cheers for watching and I'll see you next time.